Today I'm going to be giving a tutorial of my enhancements to Moai's node editor. The basic idea is that you can model directly using the standard Moai interface and nodes will be created for you automatically on the fly. For example, if I union these two objects together and select this edge and give it a little fillet, uh, the Boolean union and fillet nodes are created automatically and wired up. Now I'm going to delete this object and we're going to recreate it using the node graph. Now the nodes are created, but to execute them, we need to click the play button and you can see the colors switch from red to green. So everything is executing successfully, but to actually see the output, we need to create an output node, which one way we can do that is to right click on the output slot of one of the nodes and select add output. Now the purpose of wiring up these node graphs is so that you can tweak things and make variations of objects. Uh, one way of doing that is double clicking on any of the nodes and you can change various parameters like the radius of the fillet. Another way is to right click, for example, on the radius slot, we can wire up a float slider and we can tweak the radius. If you look closely, you can see that it's getting larger and smaller as we tweak the radius. Now I'm going to delete this output node and show another way of editing history. You'll notice that the layout of the nodes is sort of top down where each row is a kind of history item or an undo history item is another way of thinking about it. If you hit the up and down arrows on the keyboard or whatever your key binding is, you can go back through history and see every operation that you performed. Uh, you can notice that various objects that are created like the sphere are this sort of strange gray color that indicates it's locked meaning you can't click on it or select it or modify it. To get access to the object, you can click the unlock button here and you can do with this, well, whatever you like. Uh, for example, I can go back to um, the fully constructed object and I can use this for, well, anything that you can think of. But the actual thing I wanna show you right now is being able to go back in history and tweak one of the objects. So for example, if I go back to this little sphere. What I'd like to do is tweak it, its position, its size, I'm not sure, but I can right click on the sphere node and click replace with live object. That will make the object active again. I'm gonna change the history item so it's a little bit clearer to see. We can select it and so forth. But as we, if we go back to our finished object, this live sphere is now going to dynamically update the node graph. I can change its size. Um, I can move it a little to the right. And the node graph is gonna automatically update and execute and create this object for us. And now for a whirlwind tour of basic features. So in addition to be able to create nodes um, using the Moai interface, you can create nodes the manual way by right-clicking on the background of the graph canvas, clicking Add Node, and you have all these sub-menus um, for basically every factory that the Moai API supports. Now, this is an overwhelming number of choices. However, uh, for what it's worth, the menus are organized in a way that mirrors the Moai user interface. So for example, Solid, which has box and plane, mirrors the draw solid section on the Moai UI. But uh, since this is the latest version of LightGraph, it has a few nice features, including autocomplete. So if you double click on the background canvas, you can type in box and create a node that way. Now box is an interesting case. I'm gonna use this as an example. Let me delete that uh, cone and a box First, let's add an output and click the play button. Now, you'll notice the color is orange and not green, and that indicates it's not producing any objects. That's because a box needs three points. Um, we can create point constants or point objects by using autocomplete, um, which would be the basic point here. But usually more convenient is to recreate on the point input slot and say like expand point constant. We'll do that for the three inputs that we need. Well, let me start with constant point. The corner point needs to be 
on the x, y plane, that is have uh, the same z value as the const point. So I'll change the x and y values. You can actually see over here, the box is starting to be created. Now the extrusion point needs to have the same x, y value as the corner point. So I'm going to clone this node by holding control shift, clicking and dragging. That cloned it and pre-populated the values as before. And uh, I'll give it a z value, and we can start to see our box being created. Now, to disconnect a wire, you can simply click, left click, on the target slot. Um, to wire something together, you click and drag from the output slot of the source node to the input slot of the target node. You can also shift click here. Um, on the output slot of the source node, which will disconnect any number of nodes it's wired to if there are multiple wires, for example. Um, and uh, in addition to being able to right click on the background of the graph, which has a lot of useful options, you can right click on any nodes. There's various options here. I'll leave that as an exercise to the reader to um, to research on their own. And again, every input slot and output slot has its own contextual menu that is uh, that depends on the sort of type of object that is being dealt with. And it's a nice sort of autocomplete or IntelliSense that helps you to build node graphs relatively quickly, or so I hope. All right, now I want to show a slightly more complicated example that will illustrate some of the pitfalls you might run into when manipulating history like this. I'm going to make a kind of relatively simple hard surface object, um, maybe a sort of sci-fi uh, vape pen. Let's uh, do a little boolean there. Vape pen definitely needs a notch here for our robot friends to suck up the tobacco juice. Uh, let's use this as a cutter to get a notch. And that looks good. Well, maybe I'll do it a bit higher. So I'm just going to undo a little bit. Just maybe, let's, sorry, I'm going to go up here. That looks good. Uh, and I'll delete this object, delete the notch. I don't know if that's slightly better than before. It is going to need our cyber vape pen, a sort of nicotine cyber cartridge. Uh, let's extrude this up to create a, um, a notch. I actually, I'm going to taper it the other direction in a more exaggerated way, 40. Um, that looks good. Click, click. Um, Boolean, boop, boop. And let's extrude a little cyber tobacco juice cartridge here and give it the most luscious bubble, uh, bevel fillet possible. That looks quite nice. And let's give this guy a nice buttery fillet too. Maybe one. Yeah, that looks good. Now, let's hide all these things, run our node graph. And uh, I'm going to hit the up arrow key to get the most recent item. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that it looks similar, but there's something a bit off. We're missing our little cyber nicotine juice button and our top hat. So what's going on? We can go back through history and these objects are clearly still there, but you'll notice that every row in history is uh, is one command. So if we have various objects uh, that we created, uh, any one row might not have all of them being manipulated at once. The simplest thing to do, I'm going to unhide the objects that I created, is so this, is for the three objects that we're interested in, one, two, three, I'm going to select them. I'm going to right click on the background, background of the node graph and I'm going to select store selection. 
that'll create various nodes that will concatenate things together. Um, and we can confirm that that works. Well, let me move this out of the way a bit. I'm going to hit down. Oh, there we go. Right by our store selection. Uh, and we can see that now we have our button. We have our little top hat. Everything is working great. Now, to make this, uh, I'm, I'm going to save this node for later. I'm going to uh, maybe change its color to green just to remember that that's important. And I want to create a variation of this where I change the position of this notch, basically. So let's go back up through history. Um, and find our cutting object that created the notch. So here we're at the Boolean merge. Here we are. What I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to make this guy live. So I'll right click here, replace with live object, and again I'm going to move my history down all the way to our store selection, and uh, I will move this up a bit, and we can see that it's taking effect. These cuts are different than the previous one. Everything's working great for now until I move it just a little bit too high and everything is broken. What the hell's going on? Okay, let's move it back. So the problem is that some operations like fillet, where you select individual edges or individual faces, are very sensitive to the actual geometry, geometry of the object. So the Boolean that we did to cut out the notch radically changes the geometry of the object uh, depending on the position of the cutter. And so the fillet fails and everything kind of breaks. You can, in this case, it's relatively easy to see because actually fillet is orange here. We bring this back down, fillet is green. Um, and so all is not lost though. We can actually just go back in history and redo the fillet by hand and then replay all things uh, after that. So I'm going to go to the antecedent of the fillet. Sorry, I'm going to go up here. So here's a fillet. The antecedent in this case is the Boolean merge we did. Um, and I'm just going to replay the fillet or I'm going to redo the fillet by hand on this object. So I unlocked it. Let me hide this for a minute. Uh, I'm going to delete this. Now we're just going to redo the fillet. Nothing special. Oops. Okay, that that works well. We can redo the fillet and just like that, and select the object, and go down to our failing fillet command. Right click on it and say replace with selected object. Boosh. Now, if we let me just. Uh, hide this object or delete it for now. And if I go and put my output back at the store selection, you can see that the fillet is now succeeding. Our cutter here is, is in a certain place. That's the good place. I can still move this even higher and everything works quite well. And uh, we successfully edited and replayed history. Now, Another thing that might be somewhat confusing uh, is that these history chains can get quite long and complex, especially if you do a lot of like undoing and creating and deleting objects. You know, you just like have a ton of unnecessary nodes. The simplest thing to do um, is to right click on the background of the node graph and say clean up unused nodes. And that'll get rid of any extraneous nodes that create objects that you've since deleted or undid and stuff like that. And that is not a miracle. This is still a bit of a rat's nest of, uh, of confusing objects, but uh, it's uh, a little bit easier to deal with than before, than before. Cool. OK, so the last thing I want to mention is that, uh, well, this code is, is alpha quality. It's very buggy. It is very experimental. It's not FDA approved. Uh, you can download it and try it, but just bear in mind it's kind of a preview release. And uh, another thing that I should mention is that not everything is supported. So all the basic Moai commands are supported. 
for example, move will automatically create nodes. But if you use these little notch gizmos, they don't actually go through the Moai command interface and I am not capturing them at the moment. So you'll see no node is created for that. It's annoying. It's not the end of the world because once you make all these modifications, if you then run a subsequent command, I'm able to kind of half wire together the node graph. So you can still go back through history and replay everything and uh, as before, but connections in the node graph are a bit broken. Um, I do think I can fix that. So I'm not too worried uh, for now, but we'll see. For now, that's not implemented. Anyway, I hope you are willing to give this a try despite its experimental quality and give me some feedback. And I think though it's complicated and buggy, it may be useful, might be a cool enhancement to Moai. Yeah. All right. Thanks.